All right. Uh, today we're going to cover chapter 13, which is GUI programming. You're a little bit familiar with that already from PLD 101. However, um, today we're just going to dive deeper into how to do it in Python. And I'm going to show you a couple of methods um, that you can use whenever you're creating your own GUI programs. All right, so just a little recap, to a real recap of uh, some, some terms that we need to be familiar with. First of all, user interface. Uh, that is everything that you see on your computer, basically any part of your program that you can interact with, anything that you can click, if you can see any buttons, if you can scroll, that is the user interface. And that is the way that the background code is interacting with the front end code. So anything that you see on your screen that you can click, that you can scroll, that is the user interface. Now, command line interface, command line interface is a little bit different because um, it's uh, only available to you if you really want uh, to see it. Basically, com command line interface is whenever we call for, um, you actually have to search it. You have to type somewhere in your search bar command line interface, and you will see something like this. So the usually black screen um, just was text. And why um, we would need command line interface just to work with your operating system uh, most of the times to work with either the files that you have on your operating system. If your Windows crashes, you will have to use command prompt to get it back up and stuff like that. So this is more for the advanced um, users of computers. Let's see. And the last one, graphical user interface. So that is exactly what we're going to cover today, GUI. And that is the way that we uh, as programmers allow our users to interact with the program that we are um, writing. So usually it's through either buttons or lists or um, menu buttons and stuff like that. Menus, check buttons and stuff like that. That is the graphical user interface. All right, let's see. Dialog boxes, uh, again, you should be pretty familiar with these. Um, these are everywhere, basically. It's just a small window that uh, you display some sort of information for your user, and then user can perform some sort of action, which either can be clicking uh, uh, clicking the globe uh, picture or the computer picture or the check mark or the crossed, uh, crossed uh, red circle. It doesn't matter. It just um, everything that's inside of this box right here let me show you. Everything that's inside of this box is uh, the part of a dialog box. And this is the most, uh, most common way to interact with the user. You're going to present them with something, then you're going to have some sort of buttons like, okay, cancel, apply, it doesn't really matter, like, okay, or go back. And with that, your user can um, work their way through your program. Now, there are a couple of different ways to interact with your user. So in the text-based environment, which is uh, usually just your menus. So what we covered a couple of, um, actually, we might have covered it in PLG 101, menu-driven programs. And those are just text that you present to your user. And you say, uh, if you want to do this, press 1. If you want to do this, press 2. Or if you want to, to perform this action, type yes. So that is the text-based environment. No graphics are being presented to you. They're just straight up text. Now, GUI is a little bit different because instead of it being um, just like driven by um, the text that you're displaying, GUI is driven by uh, events that are happening. And what that means is the user can actually determine in which order they want those things to happen. And that happens through the pressing of buttons. Again, it's the same thing. So pressing buttons, um, scrolling to a different page or um, typing something inside of a text box, that it, that those are all events that are happening. And that is the difference between the text-based environment and the GUI environment. All right, in Python, there is a, uh, nothing that you can use straight up from just loading Python to uh, build your GUI program. However, you have to import a module called tkinter, and that module will actually allow you to write very simple GUI programs and 
Uh, I'm going to show you examples of what you can do with this module. There is there is quite a quite a lot of things that you can do. Uh, let's see. So these are all the widgets that exist that you can create in Python using that module. So I, I won't be going through all of them because there is a lot. The only important ones that you need to know is a button. A button, uh, whenever you click on it, something's going to happen. Then the check button is either on or off position. Then let's see, list box is just displays a list of item uh, for the user items and the user can select some of those items. Then the menu is just your regular menu. The choices are gonna be presented in front of the user and the user can click uh, whatever choice they want to make. Uh, let's see. And a scroll bar. Scroll, scroll bar is whenever you're scrolling, what you see on your side. Usually it's on your right side. When you're scrolling some sort of website, you will see a small line that is called a scroll bar. However, again, when it comes to GUI programming, most of these things you will have to Google over and over and over again because uh, it's, a, it's impossible to remember all of these from the first try. And... Um, as everything in programming, it comes through practice. So whenever you will be creating your GUI programs, you just have to, um, you know, have maybe maybe take some notes on what all of these widgets do, or um, just Google if you're forgetting um, if you're forgetting what the what the widget is called or which widgets exist in Python. Just Google it and. Um, it's a normal process of learning something new when it comes to coding. Just a lot of Googling and a lot of redoing of what you have already been doing. All right. Um, so those uh, programs that use that the, the tkinter, they don't really uh, run good under your uh, regular compiler, inside of your regular compiler. So the best results that you can get from uh, using this uh, module, you have to use a command prompt. However, uh, it's not that important right now because uh, we don't have to write our own programs just yet. And in the Pearson Revel, it's already done for you. But just if you are planning to use um, this module outside of class, then you have to look into how to use it and um, use it within the operating system that you are running on your computer. Most of the time, just think of it whenever you're using this method, think of it as um, building an object and using methods with that object. So most of the time you will see the uh, methods being used with the period. As you can see, this one's called main window. So we are creating some sort of um, window right here. And then we're going to display a title. And as you can see, again, it's all happening through uh, execution of methods the same way as we use in object oriented programming. So this case, in this case, we added a title. My first GUI is right here. We added a title to our window. Uh, let's see, there's a couple of more examples. Labels, labels also exist. You can create your labels. Uh, in this case, uh, it's gonna display a single line of text inside of your window. So if you want to display something, you will use a label widget and this is the, um, way how you would do it. You would put tkinter, then you put your period, label with a capital L, important, label with a capital L, and then you will specify in which window you want to create your label, then you will put a comma, and then you will specify which text you want to be displayed inside of that window. Okay, let's see. Mm, pack. All right, so there's a lot of also there's a lot of methods for positioning, positioning of your text, positioning of your windows and stuff like that. So those are you just have to be familiar that they exist. And most of the time, again, when when I used to work with uh, GUI um, <clears throat> GUI programs, it was a lot of googling and a, a lot of um, looking up for and looking up the information that I needed personally for my program because there's just so much that you can do and um, it's impossible to remember all of it. So you just have to know that these um, options are available to you. You don't really have to know um, exactly word for word how to write them. So if you're forgetting something, don't be alarmed. Don't don't think that you're failing or anything like that. It's a normal part. It's a, it's a normal process. Uh, you just have to know that um, you know, these options are there for you whenever you're creating your programs. So the pack method is just basically you're specifying your position. Um, 
your position. Let's see, the arguments are top left or right. So it's basically going to say where you want to display your text, where you want to uh, display that widget, any of the widgets that you use inside of a window, which can be a label, doesn't really matter. You can specify their positions top left or right. In this case, uh, I think the I think the uh, default one is just it displays it in the middle. As you can see here, hello world, we put a text, we put a label, hello world, inside of our window. And if we use the pack method, it just prints it in the uh, middle of, it's the same uh, amount of spaces from the right, uh, from the left, and the same amount of spaces from the right. So it just presents it strictly in the middle. Let's see, this way uh, we have, we are printing hello world and we're printing, this is my GUI program. We have two labels, as you can see here. And again, we're using just the default pack without specifying where um, we want our labels to be located. And in this case, again, they are just centered. Hello world is centered. This is my GUI, uh, covers the whole window. So it is also centered. See, if we are specifying the sides, in this case, we're specifying we want it to be on the left and we are just putting everything on the left, hello world. And then the next one also follows the our uh, hello world. This is my GUI program, follows the hello world. And they're both um, packed to the left on the same line of um, our window. So you can also specify the border width uh, and relief arguments whenever you're creating your labels. And let's see, the border width is gonna specify um, how big of a border you want your label to have from, um, from the, the walls of your window. And the relief is gonna be just the border style. And let me show you. So in this case, we're using, uh, so the type is solid. So this is, we'll just do a solid line around your uh, text and border width, we're specifying that we want it to be one. So in this case, all the way around our uh, text, we have this solid black border. So this is the way to use border width and relief. Now, if we add, uh, a bigger number for our border width, it just makes it larger. And let me show you all of the different uh, arguments that you can use for your border, all of the different types for your border. Uh, let's see. So the flat one uh, is just, there's no border, basically it's hidden. Then raised is gonna be, um, it's gonna have a little bit of a 3D appearance. Uh, here, th this is better. Okay, flat, no border at all. Raised is just a little, you, you can see that it's a little bit raised upwards. Then sunken, it's the opposite. So it's a little bit down. Then ridge is just like a little um, fence around your uh, around your uh, text. Solid, uh, I showed you the solid one, it's just black line. And then groove, it's kind of like a little, um, a little, not a tunnel, but you know what I mean? Like a little um, underground uh, around your text. So then your text appears to be higher. Uh, on the page. Okay, padding, that's another very useful thing to have. Padding is uh, the space that we can reserve to be around our text. So internal padding is right here. So internal padding is everything, uh, the space right here and external padding is the space right here. So think of it as internal padding is the space inside of our border, external padding is the space outside of our border. And again, you can specify specify um, how many pixels you want uh, it to be. And uh, if you wanna specify the um, pixels of internal padding horizontally, you have to use this iPad X. And if you want to specify the vertically pixels, you have to use iPad Y, and you have to specify how many pixels you want it to have instead of this N number. All right, let's see. Uh, this little program that we have right here, again, import tkinner, nothing, nothing new. We're importing that, we're creating our window right here. We created this whole thing. This is, this line created this window. Then uh, we are creating two label with solid borders. First one is hello world. Uh, it has a border width of one and the border is solid. And the second one is the same one, just this, instead of printing hello world, we're printing this is my GUI program right here. Now, after that, we want to add padding into our uh, text. So labels, both of these labels will have 20 pixels of horizontal, uh, horizontal 
and vertical padding, both of them, as you can see here and here. This one just looks um, bigger only because we have more words, only because we have more text to display. However, the padding is the same. Uh, let's see. And we this is uh, this is an example of internal padding because you can see that it comes right all the way to the border of your window and the same thing here right to the border of the window. So we know that there's no external padding that has been added to our window yet. Now external padding, uh, instead of uh, using I, as you can see here, I stands for internal. So I padding X, we are just using padding uh, P-A-D-X. So the only difference is you are, do not have the I in front of you because I st stands for internal. So for internal, we use the I, for external, we don't use the I. And it works the same way uh, for the horizontal, we use X, for the vertical, we use Y. And again, you specify how many pixels you want that padding to be. This is another example, it's the same idea, import T Kinter, create your window. And then for the first label, <clears throat> we created hello world. For the second one, this is my GUI program. And instead of doing the internal padding, we are doing the external padding this time. So as you can see here, instead of having uh, our borders like right here, our borders are different this time. Our borders is small. Our borders are very small. However, they have a lot of space around them. So that is the example of internal padding versus uh, external padding. Now, in this case, we created uh, both actually external and internal padding. So you can see here, there is some space in between the border and our words there. And there's also space in between the very edge of our window and uh, our border. All right, let's see. Okay. All right, frames, uh, I'll just show you an example. For most of these, all you need to know is just how they work because they work, uh, when you code them, they work all the same way. You're gonna put either, uh, you're gonna use them as a method with your window. So you're gonna put the name of the window, dot, whatever you wanna do with that window, or it's uh, the assignment statement like right here. As you can see here, uh, the assignment statements with the um, arguments. So it works the same way. All you need to do is uh, what these things are doing. Let's see, frames. Okay, for frames, <clears throat> It's not that not not nothing too difficult. You're just dividing your uh, window into frames. So as you can see here, the one that's the this dashed line, this dashed box is the top frame, and the other one is the bottom frame. So we simply just divided our window into the top and the bottom frame. Uh, button buttons allow you allow your user to click them and then do something with that action. For example, if you have a menu that is two pages long, you can ask your user uh, to click a button that has something like next on it. And if the user clicks that button, it will take them to the next page of your um, of your menu. Again, you are familiar with buttons, all of those confirm buttons, start buttons, uh, logging buttons, reset your password button buttons, all of those are buttons. Info dialog box <clears throat> is just a something, something that you are displaying in front of the user that's gonna display some sort of message to them. So you have to specify the title of your uh, dialog box. It's going to be at the very top. And then you have to specify which message you want to uh, type to the user. For example, if they type their password wrong in some um, website, you can display a dialog box saying your password is incorrect. Please retype your password or something like if you forgot your password, uh, password uh, reset your password, please. So as you can see here, see, click me. If the if the person clicks this button, it's gonna display a dialog box saying, thanks for clicking the button. That's pretty much it. Quit button, exactly what it says. Quit button will just allow you to, allow your user to quit the program as a whole. Uh, entry. Entry, entry widget just allows your user to type any sort of text inside of it. This is the uh, example, as you can see here, we have this is the uh, entry box right here. 
this this small part. So we're asking a user to enter a distance in kilometers, and then after they enter some sort of distance, they can convert it to miles or they can quit. If they click convert, we're displaying a dialog box that says 1,000 kilometers is equal to 621.4 miles. All right, labels, let me see. Radio buttons, function. All right, this one's important, list box. Uh, as I told you, a couple of the ones that are important that we're gonna focus on today. List box is just a uh, list of items that you're displaying to your user and the user can select one or more items from this list. Uh, this is the way how you would uh, insert items into your list. So you got to create the window right here. We're creating the window. The first thing that you're, you're going to do if you're working with GU GUI um, programs, then after that, we're creating our list box. We have, uh, we're sa saving it at, inside of a list box variable. And uh, let me get rid of this. Inside of a list box variable, we're creating a list box inside of our window. You just have to specify in which window you have to create that, you want to create that list box right here. And after that, you have to um, specify how you want to pack your um, items, your list of items. You don't have to specify it, but uh, it's just easier uh, for your user to see usually uh, these items. So just to make sure that the user can see all of those items in any uh, on any screen, a phone screen, uh, laptop, monitor doesn't really matter and then you add your items into that list and you add them by just using the uh, method called insert so you're going to specify which list box you want to insert it to as you can see here we have the self list box and this is the same one and then we're putting uh, a period and putting insert to the position zero we want to insert monday and so on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And again, important thing, we are starting with zero. Almost everything in programming starts with zero, the same way as when we're working with strings. Uh, our indexes start at zero. Apologize. Okay. Uh, retrieving selected items. Let's see, there was another thing that I wanted to... You can also add a scroll bar to your list box. So if you have a lot of elements that you want your user to go through, you can add a list box. This is the um, this is the steps that you need to take to create that list box uh, with a scroll bar. Let's see. This one is to creating a vertical. How do I get rid of this? OK, vertical and horizontal scroll bar. So if you want to add both of them, this is the steps that you need to take. Uh, oh, OK, the last last topic that we're going to cover is drawing shapes with the canvas widget. So the canvas widget will just um, create a blank sp space for you to draw your shapes. So if you are just calling the canvas widget by itself, it is going to be a rectangle that's going to be displayed in front of your screen. Let me show you. Uh, the way how you would use and draw your shapes is by using the um, by using the coordinate system. So x and y. X is um, this way. So this way is x. This way is y. This way is um, okay. One second. All right. To create a canvas widget, this is how you would do it. Again, you're creating a main window. Again, we start the same way we're creating our main window, the first thing. Then after that, you have to create the canvas widget. So you have to store it somewhere. In this case, we're storing it in a variable called cell.canvas. And this is the way you would create it. You have to specify the width, the height, and you have to specify in which window you want to create that widget. So nothing too complicated here. And then these are all of the methods that you can use. Create line, create rectangle, oval, arc, polygon, or text. Now, to create all of those, to create a line, so each one of these methods will have each own arguments uh, for drawing. For example, create line, you have to specify the line starting point, x1 and uh, y1, so where you want it to start. Then when you wh where you want it to end, x2 and y2. And then options, uh, there's a table I'm going to show you in a second that you can also add uh, to specify your line. All right. This is, the, this is an example of drawing just two lines, uh, drawing across, 
as you can see, create line, we're starting at zero, zero, and we're going all the way until the end of our screen, 199, 199. And then this is, uh, we're drawing the other line, we're starting at 199 and zero, and we're going until zero and 199. So nothing too complicated, just draws two lines um, of uh, inside of our canvas. Now drawing a rectangle, again, you just have to uh, specify the coordinates of the upper left corner, x1, y1, and the coordinates of the lower right corner. So the upper left corner and the lower right corner, and that will create a rectangle for you. As you can see here, we are specifying that we want to start at 2020 and we want to go up until 180 and 180. So that will create this beautiful uh, square right here in front of you. Drawing an oval, same thing. You have to create coordinates. The You have to specify the coordinate, coordinates of the upper left and the lower uh, right corner. And then it's going to draw a... Um, rectangle that you will not see, but this is just the way to think about it. It's going to draw a rectangle and then it's going to connect all of the dots to create an oval inside of it. You can also create a, uh, if you if you draw a, if you specify a rectangle, that's going to draw a circle. If you, spe uh, if you specify a square coordinates, it's going to draw a circle, my bad. If you specify the rectangle coordinates, it's going to draw an oval. Drawing an arc, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to specify, again, uh, it's the same idea. You have to specify the upper bound and the lower bound. And then you have to specify uh, how big of an angle you want it to have and how big uh, of a counterclockwise extent of your arc you want to have. So in this case, starting angle, angle is 90 degrees right here. And we want to extend for 45 degrees. So this is how we drew this arc right here. Again, this is another example of how to do it. Drawing a polygon, uh, you have to specify the first uh, vertex and the second vertex. I'm, I'm just gonna show you an example. So you have to specify the first point, second point. So you can see we're just specifying points, how many points we want our polygon to have. So this is the first point right here. This is the second point. This is the third point, fourth, fifths, sixths, sevenths, and eights. So we want to have, we want our polygon to have eight um, sides. So the if you want to draw a polygon, everything that you need to do is just specify the point where each of your sides start and end. Uh, yeah, you can see polygon, we created a polygon. This is just the way how to write it in Python displaying a text. It's also very simple. It just you have to specify where you want your text to start, and then you have to specify text, put an equal sign, and inside of the, um, what are they called? Inside of the, uh, it just, that's funny. Like sometimes my, the, the word will just disappear from my brain. And this is the easiest word. <laughs> Uh, quotations, marks. quotation marks. Yes, quotation marks. Inside of the quotation mark, thank you. You have to specify which text you want to be displayed uh, on your canvas. So you can see here, we're just printing hello world. Inside of the quotations, we specified that we want to print hello world. And we said that we want that text to start from a position of 100, 100. That's pretty much it. I know it was a lot. Uh, however, uh, how I just told you, actually, let me stop recording.